Welcome to Money in the Air, the music podcast about neighboring rights, the royalties you earn from the public performance of your recordings and the business of music in general. Brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. I'm Andrew, a royalty consultant helping artists to collect on their value. Hi, I'm Gina Deacon. I work for Absolute Rights Management and I work with record labels and artists to ensure we claim the royalty income due to them. I'm Stacey Haber and I'm from Inside Baseball Music Publishing. Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm the head of Neighboring Rights at Sony Music Publishing and I'm one of the co-founders of IFR UK and IFR Education US. Hi, I'm Tanya Oliveira. I work for Transparency Entertainment Group. I focus on World X USA Neighboring Rights on the performer side and rights holder side. Hey, welcome back to Money in the Air, the IFR podcast about neighboring rights. We are the International Association of Artists and Rights Holders and we're here to give you the skinny today on Blanket licenses. I have with me Andrew, Gina, Tanya, and Naomi. Andrew, are there blanket licenses in the U.S. the same way there are for the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5 in the U.K.? There are blanket licenses here in the U.S. and Sound Exchange administers the blanket license with the satellite radio stations. There is a statutory rate associated with every single digital transmission that are broken out into ad-supported and subscription digital transmissions. It's really exciting because we actually just had a rate increase of 17% with the ad supported and then an 8% with the subscription. So now we're at 0.0021 for ad supported and 0.0026 for subscription. Also, there are, is a minimum that got raised per radio station to $1,000. And what about broadcast and sync? Are there blanket licenses for that? That is more in terms of a broadcaster will approach a major rights holder and negotiate a blanket license with them. But that is the extent of it because we don't recognize the audiovisual performance here in the United States. Naomi, can you explain how the blanket license works here with PRS, PPL, and MCPS, please? Yeah, it's very different here. I mean, obviously, PRS and PPL negotiate their own rates with the broadcasters and the radio stations and the and the satellite and digital providers. But then in addition to that, what you don't have in the U.S. that you have here is essentially a sync blanket license for television. If you're in the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5, and you're creating programming, you've got a blanket license with PRS and PPL that as long as something is registered and essentially fully claimed on PRS and then registered on PPL, you can use any of that music in any programming. So if you're, you know, doing Call the Midwife and you want to use a song, as long as they're registered properly, then they fall under the blanket and you can use that music. So it's a sync license as opposed to just like a payment structure. And that's something that a lot of, actually a lot of Americans, they'll watch British programming and they'll be like, wait, I didn't give permission for my song to be used in this show and it's like well you didn't have to because they don't ask <laughs> you know unless you're not a member of mcps or and something's not registered properly you're never going to know about it but it's actually a big source of revenue because obviously there are per minute rates comparing you know what you could potentially get for a sink in the u.s with what the bbc pays on a per minute rate is it equal no but it's a different territory and especially highest profile artists, you know, they can do quite well getting a lot of their stuff just synced under the blanket. So it is something where it's never going to be used if it's not registered properly on those two databases or if you're not an MCPS member. The permanent rates do vary. BBC One and the prime time, I think the PRS publishes its rate as like 83 pounds a minute or something, whereas BBC Swansea at two in the morning, then you're talking about more like 40 pence a minute or something like that. So it does vary and, and whatnot. But the reason this is important is because if you are the rights holder for your work and you have not registered it on the the PPL database, then it does not fall under the blanket and therefore it cannot be used. And a lot of artists who self-release, this is a good way of earning money for them. If a broadcaster or a producer wants to use a special song, like if they want to use Journeys Don't Stop Believing, then they will seek that out. If they can't find it or something. They'll do what they need to do. But if you're not Journey and you don't have a song like Don't Stop Believing that somebody would seek out, then you're hurting yourself, really, if your stuff isn't covered under the blanket license. Gina, for broadcast under the blanket license, 
are neighboring rights paid? Yes, they are. And basically, you, as Naomi also said, you have to ensure that's the most important thing is to ensure that your recording is registered, but not just registered, it's got to be valid as well. If it's invalid, then it can't be used. They may say, well, it's registered, but if you have a look on the PPL database and there's a big red cross next to it, that means it's invalid for whatever reason and it cannot be used. Log into the database, you've got to be a member as a rights holder to register your recordings, or you can go to a distributor or a representative who will do it for you. And funnily enough, literally half an hour ago, I had an email from a label who'd been approached by Love Island, just saying, please, can you get this registered for us quickly? Love Island want to use it. So yes, we're working on that right now to get that done and up on the PPL database. There can be a number of reasons why your recording is invalid. Have a look into it. It can be if it's an older recording, it's missing some data, anything from a date of release to an ISRC. And if it's a newer recording, it's probably missing some performer information. So do get that validated and then it can be used. And if it's on their database, it's covered under the blanket license agreement, which means basically, as Naomi said, the radio stations and the TV stations and so on can actually use it without having to seek out permission from every single owner of every single recording. They just simply couldn't do that, which is why the blanket license agreement exists. And the phrase blanket license comes from, it blankets the entire catalog and you just go and look under the blanket and pick out what you want. So Tanya, when we register it through PPL or Andrew does it through Sound Exchange, does it go to other CMOs if they have blanket licenses. Yeah, in theory it should, yes. So um, I believe most European countries have a similar blanket license. I mean, they do on the publishing side. I don't see why not on the neighbouring rights side. If you've registered a track at PPL, you've signed a mandate for PPL to collect in Germany, for example, it'll show up in GBL's database in Germany. And then whenever there's like a Love Island syndicate showing there or their version of Love Island, then you'll get money. That's really good. So have you noticed something that you registered outside of PPL to collect directly? Like with GVL, have you noticed it on PPL with a green tick for purposes of being included in the blanket license? Does it translate back and forth? No. So at PPL, you have to become a PPL rights holder member and register your track there. Just okay. because something was used at GVL and there's a German ISLC beginning with DE and they've got a mandate to collect in the UK. No, I don't think it'll transfer. Am I right, Naomi? It can transfer. If you register something in the UK, then it will go out to the rest of the world but it can be a bit slower, especially if you register something at Sound Exchange. I find it can take years before it shows up somewhere else, but Gina might know better. The th we register directly with all the societies anyway, so we would register with PPL for the UK, Sound Exchange directly for the US. I know the answer to that is that it, it would be covered with each individual society, but I can't speak for those people, I'm afraid, that register with PPL. PPL does have reciprocal relationships where they send data out to the other societies and they receive data back, so so there are tracks that are going to show up if they were registered in, say, France or Germany or whatnot. The problem that sometimes you encounter is that because they don't have the original information, they're getting it from the society. So there might be things missing or there might not necessarily be all the information that they want. Or if you have a question about a track, they might have to go back to the original source. I know that there is data exchange. PPL does do international collection for a lot of people and do register it. And once it's on the systems in the other countries, then it is valid and it will fall under the blanket. You do sometimes come up with issues where there might be queries or there might be things missing. You do have that issue. Andrew, for the blanket licenses in the US, do you have to be registered with Sound Exchange and be American or can you be British, but registered directly with Sound Exchange. Well, to receive satellite radio payments, you have to be registered with Sound Exchange, but you could be registered with PPL and have a mandate that they are allowed to collect here in the US. And that's how you would receive. But to receive the sync portion, you would need to be represented by a publisher or a label that would have a large catalog that would negotiate a blanket license fee with that specific production music entity. That's how you would participate in it. And usually they pay some type of a lump sum, a large amount. NBC Universal provides cue sheets and they're gonna go over what songs were played during that certain period. And then they're gonna allocate it based off of market share, based on like what was played during that period. I have a client in Spain, Spanish nationality, has a neighboring rights 
benefits rep in the UK. So registered with PPL for UK income and registered and UK publisher, some publishers, so registered with PRS directly, also registered elsewhere for publishing. Can they be considered for the blanket license? As long as the track is registered, then yes. Okay. What if, what if it was an American client that was PPL registered, sub-published in the UK, but is still a member of ASCAP? So not Doesn't a member matter. of PRS. As long as they've got a sub-publisher in the UK that's an MCPS member on the publishing side, and they've got a mechanism in place that's registered the recording at PPL, they fall under the blanket. That's brilliant. The blanket license can be a significant portion of money. I was listening to a podcast the other day about music that was on some type of a game show in the UK, and it was generating so much money because the production company would create music specifically for the show and the composers of that show are getting like millions of pounds or something like that so it could be a significant amount of money that is allocated for you from the blanket if you're on a hit show that's on the bbc i want to reiterate what naomi said about like if you're up and coming especially an emerging artist like it's so important if you're based in the uk to register your islcs at ppl and whether directly give them an international mandate because as we discussed previously they do share that data with their sister society CMOs because yeah you you'll you'll never know what you just missed out on like your track could have gone on Love Island because they do love new music they love that you know they follow new music Friday playlists on Spotify and if they can't find you on PPL they'll just be like oh let's just move on to the next you know there's got they've got option B C D etc. Thank you very much guys and thank you for listening. Hope we've answered all your questions about blanket licenses. If not, drop us a line at info at ifr.co.uk. That's info at iafar.co.uk. And while you're online, go and become a member of IFR if you're not already. See you next time.